Welcome to this week's race news where we're going to be talking about World Cup action in Monson and EWS in Whistler and the Leadville 100. What are we waiting for? Let's get into it. Yes, World Cup action in Monsen, and first off, the XC race news. It was a packed weekend of action. The latest round of the UCI World Cup took place upon the rocky slopes, as I said, of Monsen. And in the elite women's race, it was Yolanda Neff. She broke away early in the first lap, never to be seen again, although the specialised duo of Langvad and Kate Courtney were in hot pursuit. The rough Monsen and Rock Gardens had even the most experienced riders challenged, and at one point, Langvad had to unclip and scoot down a section. The pace was too high for Courtney unfortunately and an untimely mechanical meant that she was eventually overhauled by Canadian national champion Emily Batty who is riding amazing this season and she got third. In the elite men's race, world champion Nino Scherter showed that he was still suffering from the illness that made him miss the European Championships uh, and then he's up in the XCC on Friday as well. But to add to insult to injury, Scherter suffered a snap chain whilst in the lead and then a flat tyre, although he still had enough left in the tank to secure the UCI World Cup Series standing with a seventh place in this race. But it was yet another Swiss rider at the head of the race for much of the action. Matthias Fluckiger forced the selection of the lead riders, trading blows with Anton Cooper and Kirsch Barmer on the final lap before Cooper crashed heavily on one of the rocky descents, sending his bike flying. Thankfully, Cooper was okay, but had to settle for sixth once he'd located his bike. So Matthias Fluckiger won his first ever XC World Cup and was delighted on the final part of the race, popping wheelies and pulling whips on his way to cross the line. Kirsch Barmer came in second and a delighted Caro in third, who achieved, achieved his best ever result in a World Cup. Congrats to all. Love the World Cup action at the moment. Leadville 100. More than 1,100 athletes managed to finish within the 12-hour cutoff of this year's gruelling Leadville. That list of races included seven tandem teams. To put that in context, in its first year, which was 1994, only 113 riders made it to the cutoff. An amazing growth in this race. American MTB marathon star Howard Grotz took the race win three minutes ahead of Christian Heineck, whilst fan favourite Pison McLeaven rounded out the podium in third. A further six minutes back. Leadville's own Larissa Connors won the women's elite by more than 27 minutes. She crossed the line ahead of 43-year-old Julia Dibbons and 33-year-old Chase Edwards, both also from Leadville. Nice little top three for the home team. The Breck Epic is in its 10th edition, testing riders over the high altitude Rocky Mountains in Colorado, with six days of brutally hard, fast racing over a total of 240 miles. Some of the days are relatively short at 24 miles, but that means a fast pace, and with the likes of Wheeler Pass at 12,500 feet of elevation, it really pushes the riders beyond their limits. Jeremiah Bishop of Canyon Toe Peak took the overall pro men's race with wins on stage one and six, Carla Williams won on her first attempt at the Breck Epic after battles with Katrina Engelstad and Amy Beazel. Amy did suffer a huge crash that damaged her collarbone and ruled her out of the win, but she battled on to the finish with true guts. Fair play. Now back to World Cup action in Mont Saint Anne. It's another fan and rider favourite, the high speed, high risk, high reward downhill track at Mont Saint Anne. Everyone loves it. It was a much anticipated return of Miriam Nicole to the World Cup race circuit after a nasty crash and back injury sustained at Val de Sol. Unfortunately, it just wasn't the comeback she was after, crashing just after the first split and breaking her saddle. Obviously, a bit shaken up by another crash so soon after returning from injury, and with with damage to her bike, she sensibly decided to call it a day and will double down for her home round of La Breche in two weeks' time. Big shout out to privateer Monica Hrasnik, who broke her bike in practice, ending up on borrowing a spare bike from Valet Hole and still coming sixth. That's pretty impressive. Your podium on the day was Tracy Hannah in third, 20 seconds back, 20 seconds from the top spot, and Tani Seagrave in second, just five seconds back from Rachel Atherton, who took the win, her fifth at the event and a huge step towards the overall title. So it's her and Tani battling it out in the last round. 
Shout out to G. Atherton for his 100th World Cup downhill race and a top 10 to boot. It was guts and glory as that top 10 descended the mountain. One tricky section caught out many of the world's best, going from the fastest section of the track to a few of the slowest, slipperiest and rockiest technical turns. Brooke McDonald, Greg Minar and Finals all crashing within touch of the winning split times. Ormeray Pierion secured himself the overall title by finishing ahead of the only guy who could catch him. Pierion fourth, Verge fifth, Danny Hart bagged third, Troy Brosnan stormed to second and Loic Bruni, the world champion, edged just ahead to claim a well-deserved top spot. After a series of injuries and bad luck, congrats Loic, good to see you back at the top of the hill. Um, with Ormeray Pierion's victory and other strong performances, Commonsell Valnord wrap up the team overall with round in hand. And now to the Enduro World Series also taking place in Canada at the weekend. In the women's elite field, it was a little surprise, not really, to see Cecile Ravenel dominate all five stages of the EWS round. The common style rider is absolutely unstoppable, winning every single round this year. But can she hold on to her streak with two more rounds to go? In hot pursuit of Ravenel, Isabel Cadurier. She uh, came in second place with Noga Karem finishing in third for GT Racing. Over to the men's now. Now, and it was Martin Mays of GT who took his first ever EWS win after plenty of podium performances, coming first and second across all five stages, while Sam Hill took second place and Eddie Masters in third. We were expecting to see Richie Rude on that podium this weekend after taking first in the uh, two of the five stages, um, a second in another, but a flat tire during the final stage, setting back to finishing in 10th place. Oh, gutted. Um, there are still two more rounds to go of EWS. Spain and Finale Le Guir. Um, our very own Neil Donoghue will be heading out to that race in Finale uh, for the final round. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he does. Has he still got it? <laughs> Dunno. Thanks for watching this week's race news. What a weekend it was. Now, if you want to see how Neil could do in Finale, why don't you check out this video where he rode the Ard Rock Enduro, part of his Enduro training series, episode three. Has he got the speed to race EWS? Who knows? Click on the globe to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, like, and I will see you next week. Don't forget, Dirt Should Show, Friday.